Last week we talked about words of affirmation and how kind words go a long ways for people. And how when people give kind words and they want to have kind words come back. And, um, so today we're talking about quality time. And a lot of people here like quality time, don't you? And um, I think we all like quality time. And I think all of you would say this. Sometimes that's hard to find. It's hard to find quality time. You know, when you guys remember when you had a house full of kids and you both worked and you did everything, it was hard to come together and have quality time because usually your time is getting dinner ready, getting the kids ready to go to school, go to work, have lunch, come back home from work, do it, do it all over again. We get in such a routine. Don't we? we have a routine, a weekly routine. You know, in my house, we have a routine. And so we can go a week and not truly have quality time with each other. It can happen. Because a lot of us think quality time is just being right here beside each other. No, that's not quality time. That is not quality time. Quality time is this, giving your undivided attention. Meaning, here I am, Christy, here I am, let's talk. Let's do this, me and you. Or as a family, me, my wife, my two kids, and my third one coming. What are we going to do together? This is us, quality time. Because in that quality time, becomes comes out of that discussion time, Right? You start to discuss. Or you'd have quality activities and you begin to do things together. And out of activities comes quality time because you end up talking about something. You know, a lot of times my quality time is when I get with my buddies, you know, I go play golf with them. We're playing golf. We're doing it together. But during that time, we're talking. We're talking about really serious things. And what is that? What is that? That is quality time. We're doing something together that's making us focus on each other. And this is my wife's love language. And it's it I struggled figuring out what her love language is, what her number one thing is. And it's this. It's quality time. And how I figured it out was I had to go I had to go back to 13 years ago when we were dating. I said, what was I doing? To get her, you know, to reel her in, you know. I was giving her my time, was what I was doing. You know, like I talked about before, we was in school, we met in college. So we did a lot of study dates. We got together, worked on the homework together. We had a lot of classes together, so we did work together. So during that time was quality time because we were learning how each other learned and we were helping each other. But outside of that, she worked at Office Depot and she would close a couple of nights a week and so she would get off at nine and so I would drive from school over to office depot I'd pick her up we'd go to cookout we'd get a milkshake we'd eat a milkshake and talk and then I'd take her back to her car because she had to be home at 11 so we'd sit there for 30 40 minutes eat the milkshake and we'd talk drop back off to her car and she would go home but during that little bit of time guess what we had we had quality time she had my attention I had her attention you know, we like to go putt-putt. We like to do that together. That is quality time. But if you look at my wife, when she plans birthday parties, when she does things with the kids, she's doing it from this thought. What can I do to have quality time with the kids? What can I do to have quality time when all the family comes to the house? What can we do? And uh, Like our favorite quality time is actually when we get away from our schedule and we go to West Virginia. You know, it's crazy how we... We talk more when we get away from here because we get in our routines where I got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. And there's not that communication that we need to have. And, uh, and so I need to work on that. I need to work on giving her my quality time. Because, you know, it's hard sometimes. You want to come home, you get home from work, you just don't want to do nothing, right? You just want to sit in your chair, look at your newspaper, and just, <sighs> how many of us do that? We want to do that. No, but we just want to, no matter who you are, but that person that needs quality time might just need five minutes. Five minutes for them to speak and tell them what's going on, what happened in their day, what's going on, and you listen. And then after you listen, you've got to speak back. But then there's, then there's quality activities. Doing things together that produces conversation. Example, dinner at the table. 
You know, I look at my childhood growing up. You know what my family never did? We never ate at the table. We never ate at the table. We ate in front of the TV. We all ate in chairs and couch. That was just our thing. That's what we did. And so that was... I can't remember what me and Chris did up to the kids, but we... That was, I think we fell in that trap before we had kids. We sat in front of the TV, but I don't think we, I can't, I'd have to ask what we did for the kids. I can't even remember. But that's how I grew up. Just, you sit wherever you want to sit to eat. You know, just, that's how we did. But we as a family today, whenever I'm home, even if I'm not home, they sit at the table and eat. Because what happens when you sit at the table? You have quality time, right? Because you're eating. And you start to talk. And so it's a quality time. It might be 10, 15 minutes, but you know what? That's quality time. Amen? And uh, so I didn't have that as a kid. I didn't have that. And it was just, I don't know why we didn't have that. Uh, I couldn't tell you. But that's what we, did. we just didn't sit around the table. But you know what? God created time. You believe that? Period. Time. He created it. When he said, let there be light, guess what started? Time. Right? Because the sun comes up and the sun comes down. And so guess what? There's a time that's going to rise and there's a time that's going to become dark. Right? So God created time. So God believes time is important. Right? And he wants to give you quality time. Amen? And God wants you to give him quality time. Right? Right? That common sense. Because what happens if you give him your attention? He will speak to you, right? And you guess what you feel? You feel him. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're getting past. Yes, I know God, but now I want to feel him. You give him some quality time, guess what? He's going to give it to you. Amen? Isn't that good? Right. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give you, you the time that you need. So we're going to look at a passage of Scripture in Hebrews and here's how we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it verse by verse. And we're looking at it through the eyes of time. Quality time. God wants quality time with you. Amen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look verse by verse. Verse 19 through 25. <clears throat> verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place... By the blood of Jesus Christ. Easter's coming. The message of Jesus Christ is coming next week. And it's, here's the message. Jesus paid it all. Amen. He paid it all. And so because of that, you can have confidence. You can come into his presence. And no matter who you are, you can come into his presence. And it's, it's going to be okay. You're not going to be struck down. You're not going to say, no, you're not holy enough. You're not going to be struck down and be destroyed. Amen? You could be Adolf Hitler. You could walk through these church doors. You could be President Obama. You could be Randall Halton. You could be Jay Tribbett. You can walk through these doors. It don't matter how wretched you are. It don't matter how good you are. You can walk in that door and guess what? Jesus is going to have his arms wide open and says, come. <coughs> Amen? He's going to accept you who you are, and then he's going to say, all right, now let's work it out. Right? He's not going to say, don't you dare come in my door. You've got to go, because if you step in, it's over for you. You're dead. That's gone. That's no longer the way, is it? Because of the blood. Amen? That perfect sacrifice. And so now people can come into the church house. People can come into his presence, wherever they are. And that time now is allowed for them to come. And to have a chance to get right with Him. Amen? <coughs> Isn't that good? We can have confidence in that, that we can be bold and come to the throne. Verse 20. By a new and living way, open for us through the curtain. That is, His body. There's no more separation. There's no more separation between me and God anymore. Because of His body, the sacrifice. And here's what's cool. In verse, in verse 20, by a new and living way, something new, God, Jesus changed it all. He brought something new to the day. He said, I'm giving you my sacrifice and I'm giving you something new. 
And what is people getting? What are we getting from this? Guess what we're getting? We're getting quality time from God. Amen? Now I ain't got to worry about a priest to do what I, what I need to get right. Now it's up to me. It says, God say, now because of my son, you, you got a new and living way. You cannot blame anybody else. It's up to you. This is a new way. I've given my body for you. My blood has covered you. What are you going to do? Are you going to let me in? Are you going to give me that time? Amen? Because many of us want to be a Christian and give no time to God. We want to say who He is and give Him nothing. We want the blessing of heaven and not the works of the kingdom. But in order to work, you got to give Him your time, your quality time. Verse 21. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, who is the great priest? Jesus Christ is now the great priest. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw to God with a sincere heart and full of assurance that faith brings. See what time was brought? See how powerful time is? That, that moment when Jesus went to the cross, that time brings all this. And here's what you can know. Here's the assurance that you can have when you come to God. Because when, when you get into His presence, you're coming to His presence, you can know that the faith that you have, that time that you have with Him now is holy. Amen? It becomes holy. When you come into His presence, you become holy. If anything, for that moment. Amen? When you come to pray, you're coming to pray to Him and God is making you holy because you are what? Confessing Whatever you've done wrong, whatever is going good, you're giving Him the praise. And so this is a covering. Amen? So we need that quality time. Verse 23, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for He has promised, for He who has promised is faithful. Quality time with Jesus brings assurance in your life. Amen? It don't matter what you're going through. It don't matter how hard life is. You can have the assurance that Jesus is in your life. And the only time you're going to feel that is if you give Him quality time. Amen. My wife, the only way she's going to know that we got a strong, great marriage is if I give her my quality time. If I show her, cause her to feel my love for her. Amen. If I don't give her no time, <laughs> she's going to think something's wrong. Amen. So I have to give her my time. I need it and she needs it. Quality time. When you get quality time with Jesus, it gives you renewed hope in what He's given you. And He's given you this, His love. Amen. You've all received His love. And when you received it, you feel it. And so if you constantly come to him, constantly get quality time from him, you feel it. And guess what? There's no rules on how you do this. We all got different personalities. We all got different strengths. You figure out how you're going to give God quality time. I'm not supposed to be up here to say, you need to do this, you need to do that. No. All I'm here to tell you is, do it. <laughs> Amen? Verse 24. Yeah, verse 24. Here's what happens whenever you receive that quality time and you feel that assurance. Verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. And so when you get that quality time with Jesus, guess what? It's going to bring out a heart to share of that love. Amen? When you feel it, you're going to express it. Right? If we have a good service here and you feel God's presence show up, guess what you say? Man, that was a good service. That was good quality time. Now, if God doesn't show up on Sunday morning, it ain't going to feel like it was good quality time. It's going to say, that was a waste of my time. And some people go to God in prayer and feel like, because they're so hard-hearted, that was a waste of my time. 
Why did I even pray? Because that was a waste of my time. We feel that some way. But when we experience it, when we experience that, when we feel it, we start to express it. We start to do those good deeds. We start to share God's love. And here's verse 25. Here's at the end. Here's where he kicks off the time. Not giving up meeting together as some are to have it up doing, but, but encouraging one another and then all the more as you see the day approaching. We're not, we don't, sometimes when our life gets hard, we get discouraged, what do we do? We crawl up in a hole we get by ourselves. And we say this, nobody loves me. Nobody likes me. When that's not true, that's a lie from the enemy. And it says, let's get out of this habit and let's continue to meet. Meet with your wife. Meet with your husband. Meet with your family. Get with them and allow them to share their love for you. If you're not with them, you don't know, right? If you're not with them, you can't work it out. If you try to hide, you're not going to know the love. But encourage one another and all, the, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You can't have quality time with yourself. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> you cannot have quality time with yourself. Now is there any, is there, you can get by yourself. Sometimes you want to be by yourself, but the quality time you can't get it with yourself. You need one thing, you need a couple things. If you're by yourself, you need God. Right? He'll show up, and guess what? You're not by yourself anymore. Right? So you're spending quality time with Him. And so you can so you can't you gotta have God and people in your life to be encouraged. You gotta have it. Now I got one more verse for you to finish this up. And it's amazing if you look at quality time and when I read this verse, it opened my eyes to the power of the cross and the power of how much God wants to give you all of his time. It's John 14, 23. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. We all know that. We've all heard that. Here's the second half. My Father will love them. If you obey Jesus' teaching, my Father will love them. We like that. That sounds good, right? We want to be loved by God. But here's his last part. Here's the, that's, here's the woo moment. My Father will love them and we we, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we will come to them and make our home with them. You see that? Whew. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit will come to them and make our home with them. Man, that is good. I hope you can see that. Is you're getting everything. You're getting God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus in you, and He's building something in you. Amen. That's part of becoming holy. It's part of becoming sanctified. It's Him coming in and building, rebuilding you. Amen. And in order for that to happen, guess what? It takes quality time to build a house. It took quality time for Carl to build that garage, didn't it? It took for him to get people around him to help him do specific things and it took quality time. And this is what God is saying. How we build houses is how I'm going to build you. If you spend time with me, you got all of me and we're going to do this together. So we're never alone. Amen. That's the Easter message. That's the power of the cross. The blood has changed everything. It's changed everything. Now we have a home and the home is in here. We got it. Amen. Amen. We can be sick. We can have a hard life always. But you know what? This ain't my home. Is it? It's not my home. It's just my resident. That's why I pay my rent for right now. It's not my home. My home is in paradise and it's waiting on. So what do I need to do now? I need to give my quality time to all of you. Amen? So imagine, this is what 
it would feel like to your spouse, to your family. If you give them your quality time, if you give them quality time, guess what? They're going to feel like they're a part of your home. Amen? They're going to feel like you're a part of that. If you love God and your spouse, your friends, your family with all your heart, you will have the Trinity living in you and giving you quality time. Now some of you, your number one thing is quality time. And so you get this. You're like, yes. I need that. That's what I'm talking about preaching. But all of us like it. All of us like quality time. And so we need to figure out, okay, who needs it more? Who needs it more? Now listen, here's what quality time can be. It can be 15 minutes a day. You can say a lot in 15 minutes. I prove that when I preach. Right? <laughs> I'm not long with it, so you can get a lot done in 15 minutes. You can say, honey, I'm going to give you 15 minutes a day. We're going to sit down and you just tell me everything you want to tell me. And I'm going to listen and I'll give you right back. Amen? Come on, man. So Randall's at the house. He's at his house. I show up. What's going on, man? What's up? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. What are we going to do today? What TV's over here, ain't eh? Okay. That's what I see. Isn't this what we do? This is quality time. Come all the way over to Randall's house to hang out with him. Have quality time. <laughs> Get home from work. The wife's at home. Sit down. Watch TV for hours all evening. No discussion. Might laugh here and there once in a while to something on TV, but not talk. This is what we think quality time is. This is a trap we've fallen into. This is quality time. Some of you retired people that are house at the house a lot. May get busy, but then come together today. It's true. Now I want to show you a big difference. Now I come over and I mean, let's do something. What can we do, man? Let's do something. I'm going to ask you a Scrabble board. I'm going to put Scrabble. Yeah, just so happy. Oh, let's put Scrabble. <laughs> now. Now, what's the difference here? We're looking at each other, right? We can discuss. When we're watching TV, we're not looking at each other. Now we're looking at each other. Now I'm going to worry you out here. And so, I'll go first. I'm my dad. Right? I got to tea. Huh? That's not a word. I got a word here. Here's my word. Quality. Can you like that? Yeah. Uh-oh. Time. So we just spell quality time. But that's what it's called. Isn't it? Putting us together. Yes, we're, we're playing a game, but we're communicating. We're talking. And so out of this conversation, come this man, right? Hey, how's, how's work going? I hear you're uh, going back to school. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm glad you're doing it. That's going to be good, man. Now, now go on. Let's play. You know? It's going to create a conversation. If we're focused on something else and not thinking about each other, thinking about this TV, we're not going to talk. All right. We might talk here and there, but it's not going to be a, a deep discussion. So sometimes we got to make a we got to make an effort to say, "All right, let's forget the other world. Let's spend time together. Let's play this board game." You know, and this is what my wife needs because this is what we used to do, and it's my fault. I've forgotten. She needs this. She needs these moments where we play these board games. We got, we got all kinds of stuff. This is what we do when we go to West Virginia. We get mom and dad and we play board games. Why can't we do that here? It's because we get stuck in a rut. This is our schedules. I'm tired. I just want to. 
And God is saying, I'm not going to build my home that way. Is he? It's here. The home is built here. Amen. The home will be strong right here. Through a little bit of time of me focusing on him. Me focusing on my wife. Me focusing on my kids. Amen. So we got to open our eyes to that. But look, we got it. We we looking at it wrong sometimes. We try to think if we're in the same room, it's quality time. <laughs> wrong. Because if you're not talking, it's not quality. Is it? It's not you giving him your undivided attention. Amen. So we got to work on that. I got to work on that for my wife, for my kids, for myself. I got to work on that. We probably all need to work on that better. Because we got this mindset, Paul at times was just, we're always together. We can always be together and be miserable. Or know nothing about what's going on. But God doesn't want to build his house that way. He wants to build it to where it's quality time. Because if it's built right, it's built holy. And so when my kids grow up and leave, guess what? They pass it on to their wives and their husbands and their children. So guess what? It is blessed. But if we are not sitting together, if we are scattered and about, I don't know what's going on with my family. But if we do the right things, we will know and say, kids, go and be blessed. Amen? It's important. Words of affirmation. Tell people you love them. Quality time. Show them you love them by giving them your time. Amen? I told you this was going to be good. I'm enjoying it. Next week's my week. Next week's my love language. I'm ready for that. I don't even need, I don't even need notes. I don't need nothing. <coughs> I hope the, the whole point of this sermon series is it, the biggest thing it's going to make you do is think. And it made Randall think when I sat down with him last night and he said, I don't know what my love language is. Then I told him what it was and he thought. And he said, no it ain't. <laughs> and that's what all of you might be saying. This one ain't me. Or the last one wasn't you, but there's one that is you. Well, one of these might be yours. You just had to think through it and say, yeah, that's my strong one. That's the one I really need. Because what you're doing is this. If you are quality time you were trying to give quality time. That's what my wife's trying to do. She's trying to give me, my kids, the family, quality time. And all she wants in return, because that's her love language, is my time. She wants quality time back. Amen. If I'm giving her, she's giving me quality time all the time, but I'm giving her acts of service, we're just on a spinning wheel. But if I come back and give her my quality time, she's happy and she's feeling it. Amen? But I, I still got to do all the other things, all the other love languages, but there's that one. And that's her one. It's quality time. Amen? Amen. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this message. We thank you for Scripture. We thank you for the power of the blood. You said that at the perfect time to change how we communicate with you. And you said, I want my people to be able to have quality time with me. Because of your son, Jesus Christ, going to the cross, dying and rising again, you have given us that chance, that opportunity to have quality time with you. And it's just, it's amazing. And Lord, we stand on that verse. That you said that my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Lord, that is so powerful. That is so powerful because we completely get all of you. And uh, that, gives us, that gives us so much comfort, so much joy. And if, if you are truly in us, we feel you because you will give us your time. 